Accounting. And joining us now at the uh, console here at the Mission uh, Control Center at the Atlas Space Flight Operations Center is uh, Wanda Harding. She is the mission manager for the Launch Services Program here at Kennedy Space Center. And Wanda has been uh, very much involved with uh, this mission and particularly the uh, uh, the Atlas V rocket and the uh, interface between the uh, rocket and the spacecraft. And uh, we have asked Wanda if she would uh, walk us through a little bit about uh, what we've done to get uh, this Atlas V ready to fly today. So, Wanda, welcome. And if you could tell us now what we're seeing as uh, we start to uh, play the video. Okay. As they're queuing up the video, uh, what we see is the Atlas V and shortly the Centaur coming off the Foss Mariner. Uh, this is the first time we've actually transported the Atlas V by uh, ocean vessel. It usually comes in by air on the Antonov, but uh, for this mission we were able to share a ride with the WGS Delta IV booster. Uh, you see the vehicle being transported, uh, arrived at uh, the port and transported up to Cape Canaveral to the ASOC. Uh, where the booster and the Centaur uh, completed their checkout. Uh, now they're getting ready to transport out to the launch site. Uh, we start at the erection of the booster on the 29th. I'm sorry, they arrived on the 29th of July, but we started all of the operations out at the VIF, or the Vertical Integration Facility, on the 8th of September. And so here you see them uh, lifting the booster uh, you see the nozzles for the RD-180 engine going up. Uh, this took about a day or so, and you see it's a uh, very skillful operation uh, that's required, uh, making sure that everything aligns as appropriate. And of course, um, once the booster has been outfitted, here we have a nice view of the VIF. Uh, once the booster's been outfitted, there are four solids flying on this vehicle. It took about a day each for mounting the four solids on each on the on the vehicle itself. Uh, here you see them erecting one of the solids. Once those were in place, then they continued with stacking of the launch vehicle, and we got as far as the lower base module on the vehicle, which I'll show in a moment, uh, to support our wet dress rehearsal. Uh, here are other views of the solid motors as they're being uh, and, prepared for uh, mounting. We have uh, how many on this vehicle? We have a total of four on this vehicle. Uh, for those that were with us in August for the launch of Juno, you'll recall that that mission had uh, five solids. Uh, for the mission to Mars, we only required uh, the power of four. And as you see at the top, uh, Aerojet is the provider of the uh, solid rocket boosters that we have for this vehicle. Uh, the tank itself, the booster itself rather, was fabricated in Denver and then completed uh, fabrication and checkout in Decatur, Alabama, and of course was transported by boat coming up the Tennessee River down the Mississippi uh, through the Gulf and up the coast of Florida. Once the solids were attached to the booster. Uh, it was time to bring the Centaur, which is the upper stage of the launch vehicle, and that's also the stage that will propel uh, MSL into its hyperbolic departure orbit. And for this mission, we do have the single engine Centaur. And as I stated, the booster was brought on board on the 8th of September. Uh, the Centaur arrived out at the VIF on the 21st of September. Nice view of the Atlantic Ocean from the VIF. And you also have a nice view of uh, Pad 41. And of course, VIF is Vertical Integration Facility because we we stack everything this vertically. Exactly. Yeah, right. We stack everything vertically on for this. So here the engineers are making sure that we have a good mate. 
Uh, of course, the most exciting thing was actually getting the spacecraft ready for encapsulation into the payload ferry. Uh, we started mating the spacecraft to its adapter hardware on the 24th of October and completed the encapsulation for transport on the 3rd of November. Of course, we do this overnight so that we avoid um, our typical daytime traffic and um, pretty much can take the time that's necessary to get the uh, encapsulated spacecraft, which uh, was processed here on Kennedy Space Center, the spacecraft was, in our payload hazardous processing facility, um, transported out to the VIF, and of course now it's ready for mate to the launch vehicle itself. Very delicate operation. And what you see taped is actually protecting the MSL logo that's on the payload fairing because there were some additional operations and access required by the spacecraft team. Uh, we didn't want to violate any of the cleanliness requirements. Well, Wanda, thanks uh, very much. And of course, that's been the um, uh, order of the day right through this mission is to maintain the cleanliness, uh, not just very for, important uh, for this mission for the uh, spacecraft, but also I think the fairing that we saw had to have a lot of cleaning. Absolutely. Yes. So, well, Wanda, thanks very much for coming over and uh, telling us about uh, how we've integrated all of these uh, stages together and the uh, preparations to get ready for launch today. Well, thank you for yeah. having me over, George. And we're at T-minus 1 hour, 32 minutes, 25 seconds and counting. This is Atlas Launch Control.